What's up YouTube, it's Coach Corey, and I hope you guys are excited for the update because it's coming very soon and I can't wait for it. So today's video, I want to help prepare you guys for the update. So I'm gonna go over whether you should spend your coins before the update or after the update, and then I'm gonna go over balance changes. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so there's a big debate within the community about whether or not you should spend your coins before the update or after the update. One of the reasons for spending it before the update is what well, any elixir you have in your account will get converted to tokens on a one to 40 ratio. So every one elixir you have will get converted to 40 tokens. And additionally, any chip you have gets converted to three gems. So a lot of people are thinking, and maybe rightfully so, is that, well, maybe I should open all my coins, all my boxes before the update to try and get a really good elixir to token ratio and get some gems as well. Well, it's not a bad argument, but I'm not quite sure it's the best argument. So maybe you should spend your coins after the update. And actually, I used my dev build feature to do a lot of testing on this. Now, actually, some of the drop rates from the dev build are going to end up being a little bit different in the live build, in the update. But I think it's going to be accurate enough to give you a good idea as to when you should be spending your coins, before the update or after the update. Okay, so before getting into the math, the answer is actually really close for both these situations. I don't think there's a bad answer, but you ended up getting a little more value if you saved your coins for after the update. And one of the biggest reasons for this is tickets. Tickets are a bonus drop on any box you open after the update, and you get a lot of your gold back from those tickets because you can use those tickets in the two events and get some of your gold back. And it's especially valuable if you have the boosts, because those boosts apply for the events, and then you get a lot of gold. Those events actually give you a good amount of gold. Okay, and a lot of people are also wondering if, well, if I save my coins for after the update, and I open all the boxes then, before I open the boxes, should I be buying some of the upgrades so I can no longer get them in Brawl boxes, and maybe up my chances of getting other things? Well, as far as the total value, there are some things to keep in mind. Overall, though, what I found is there are two methods that end up with very similar results, and that's buying all the pins before getting any boxes or just buying nothing before getting all the boxes. You could buy all the pins and badges, um, or even all the pins, badges, and medals before opening boxes, but I found those to be a little bit less value. Okay, so now let's get into the math. So if you guys just want to skip this part and just go ahead to the balance changes, feel free to skip ahead a few minutes. It shouldn't be too long. Okay, first, let's go over what sort of value you would get from opening the boxes before the update. Okay, so first off, I'm gonna assume that we're opening about 100 boxes here. So in order to get the total value from this, I used a chart that I made where I compiled the drop rates of everything prior to the update. So I opened about 1,500 boxes, or rather, I compiled the data from opening about 1,500 boxes, and you guys should see the chart up now, but it gave me the drop rate for pretty much everything so on average, when you open 100 boxes, you get about 68 chips, 72 elixir. And if you convert all those chips into gems for prior to the, or for after the update, you get about 200 gems. So we're gonna put those gems back into big brawl boxes. So let's pretend you get another three big brawl boxes. So in reality, you're opening 130 boxes. So the total value of all of those boxes, if you convert all that into tokens, on average, that total value is about 3,700 tokens from all of those coins and from the gems converted into big bra boxes. Now, if we look at those 100 boxes opened after the update, on average, you get about 3,500 token value. So that's a little bit less, but that's not considering tickets. On average, from opening 100 boxes, you get about 45 tickets. Now, those tickets, you can sort of convert into gold. So on the average run for boss fight for me, I got about 23 gold on average. So 23 gold for every ticket is about 1,000 gold but that's not counting with boosts. So if you have both of the boosts on, you get about 3,000 gold on average. So putting that back into boxes, you get an average token value of about 4,500. So that's definitely a good amount better than opening the boxes before the update. Now, of course, if you're free to play, it's gonna be a little bit less if you don't have any of the boosts. So it could end up being around 3,800 token value. So still a little bit better. Okay, I hope that cleared it up for you guys. If you have any questions though, 
please feel free to leave them in the comments and I will try and answer them. All right, now let's get into the balance changes. So to start out, all health and damage of every brawler and their super has been increased by 400% for easier balancing. This way they can make smaller percent changes and they can make more accurate changes to you know, better balance brawlers. They don't have to increase or decrease as much. They can be more exact with this. Also, your super meter now charges instantly. So before, sometimes there was a bit of a lag. So if you were a character that charged their super very fast and you wanted to use your super right away because you knew you did enough damage to charge your super, well, before sometimes it lagged a little bit or there was a slight delay to when you'd be able to do it. Now you can use it instantly as soon as you've done enough damage or charge your super enough, it'll be instantly charged. So that's a nice fix. Also, Poco had a bug fix where some rapid attacks wouldn't register. So now if you, you can attack as fast as you want with Poco and all of his attacks should register. Crow, his super jump is now performed much faster. And to me, this is a buff as he can now jump in and out of combat much faster. You can't predict exactly where he's going to land as quickly. I think that's definitely a buff for Crow. And then there were a bunch of nerfs to how much uh, Brawler's supers charge their next super. So Barley, Dynamite, Colt, and Brock all got that nerfed, all for a little bit different amounts. Barley, his super charges next super by 33% less. Dynamite by 17% less. Colt by 17% less. And Brock by 25% less. And I think those are all pretty good changes. Those are all brawlers whose supers are very strong. So I agree with that for the most part. And then Jesse and Nita got main attack damage buffs. Jesse got a 12.5% buff. And Nita got a 6% buff. And I actually think those are great changes Jesse definitely needed more damage, so that's a good thing. And then I think it's good that Nita got a damage buff, as now she can compete with Tara and Shelly a little bit more. And then also Pam's healing rate for her super increased. I don't necessarily think this was a needed change, but it's going to be interesting to see how this impacts. I could see it still being finely balanced. Maybe it's more of a balance for the addition of some star powers. It could be for that, but we'll see how this impacts the game. And then additionally, Bo, his mines now have the pushback again. So if you step on one of his mines and they explode and you take the damage, you're also going to be pushed back a little bit as well. Okay, and then there are also some additional bug fixes. So for Brawl Ball, there used to be a bug where if you were jumping as you picked up a ball, you could carry the ball with you and you could even carry it all the way into the goal while you were mid-air. So that bug is fixed. You can no longer do that. That's definitely good. That was an exploit for sure. There's another bug that's fixed where if you shot a ball and hit a turret or a healing station, the ball would get stuck or blocked on the turret. That is no longer possible and now should bounce off it. Additionally, now more star player points are awarded for scoring a goal. And I think that's a good thing because a lot of times you could score two goals and you wouldn't even get star player and it could have been a short game, for instance, and you still honestly didn't have a good chance of getting star player. So I think this is definitely a good fix because scoring goals is obviously very important in Brawl Ball. And then additionally, there are now two changes to GG Corral. One is that the map layout is different. And if I'm allowed to, hopefully I will be showing you guys a picture right now. If not, you will see it in game soon. Also, now the defenders no longer spawn in front of the safe in GG Corral. They now spawn in the back two corners and it will be pretty obvious what those back two corners are when you see the map. All right, everyone, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Now, I know a lot of you, are, I'm sure, are wondering when exactly the update is. I'm not allowed to say, but it is going to be very soon. It's definitely this week. So be excited. Be ready. All right. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you later.